Now, uh, a scheme letting you get cash from a retailer's tills without needing to make a purchase is to be rolled out to more than 2,000 shops before the end of the year. Under the scheme, you'll be able to withdraw up to £50 in notes and coins in smaller shops or check their balance free of charge. Martin Newman is a consumer expert, also known as the consumer champion. Martin, a very good morning to you. Is there demand for people to do this? Well, I know they've run a trial and I believe they had nearly 25,000 transactions over the course of a year with an average withdrawal rate of about £28. And I think given the fact that lots of bank branches have been closing, uh, there's been a huge reduction in, in the availability of ATMs, particularly in smaller, more rural, rural locations. And then I think you could certainly say there's an opportunity for this um, within those areas. Whether, whether there's going to be demand for it in larger conurbations, I'm not so sure. Uh, but if you run a small shop, this is probably the last thing you need because most people are shopping with cards anyway. You'd have to get the cash in. Well, you could you could take that perspective, but then I suppose the other side of the coin is it's going to bring people into the store. If you know, because there's still a, a fairly, it's a small, but it's a sizable percentage of consumers in the UK who still need access to cash. And if you know that you can go and get that, as you would do withdrawing from an ATM, from a small local independent retailer, that's bringing footfall into your store. I would reckon when customers are in there, that's your opportunity to sell stuff to them, and I'm sure it will lead to some impulse purchases. So I do think it's an opportunity, but I also think that uh, those retailers are going to have to be incentivized accordingly because there's a cost to providing this as a service in terms of the cost for the withdrawal of the cash, the bank charges, but also uh, probably increased insurance by having to keep more cash on the on their premises as well. When was the last time you got cash out? <laughs> I did actually get some uh, about a week ago because my hairdressers, or my barbers, I should say, where I go to get whatever's left of my, uh, my hair cut, um, don't take cards, only take cash. So there are still some environment, there are still some places where you can go that are uh, <clears throat> sort of cash only and not digital. And I suppose the other thing I would say as well is, you know, if you think about a lot of older consumers who haven't, fully embraced digital yet, then I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for them to uh, still be able to transact in the environments that they want to. Whereas the younger generation who have grown up with Apple Pay, you know, cash is, is almost something that they're not using at all at the moment. Martin, this is going to be the death knell for, for bank branches, isn't it? Because if everybody's offering cash, not offering gosh, but cash, but giving you the uh, access to it, um, that, why, why have bank branches? Well, they've already closed a, a, a fair chunk of them throughout the UK anyway, haven't they? So, and I think that's what this is playing to. This is this is trying to plug a gap in the market that's been left by the withdrawal of those bank branches. As I say, is it going to lead to closure of bank branches in larger conurbations? I wouldn't have thought so. You know, at the end of the day, I, I really don't see lots of consumers going into retailers in the centre of London or Glasgow or Manchester, if you like, taking up this service. Whereas if you live in a village or you live somewhere a little bit more remote where you don't have a local back branch because it's been closed down and your local post office was probably closed years ago as well, then I think it's a great service for consumers in, in, in that area. So it's a bit of a balance. Um, I think it'll work in certain areas and not in others. You've said that it's going to be better for the older consumer, but to work out where you can do this, you've got to kind of download an app and there's a lot of admin before you actually get into the shop and get your cash. Yeah, that's, I think that's a fair, I think it's a very fair point. Um, and I think that's something that probably needs to be thought through a little bit better in terms of how they communicate this and how they make it visible, uh, whether it's through point of sale and local shop windows, um, maybe leafleting the local area, which is something I would do if I had a retail business that was offering this as a service in order to encourage people to come into my store to be able to take up on this uh, opportunity. You, you raised it earlier that there is the issue of, of security and safety because people are going to know that shops ca are carrying a large amount of cash. It does make them vulnerable. Potentially it does. Um, but then, you know, that we've, we've lived with that for a very long time, haven't we? So I'm not really sure what the answer to that one is. I think they just have to have a safe in the back and be uh, cautious about, you know, what how they, how they manage this. But um, there are unscrupulous people everywhere, aren't there? So whether that's, you know, digital hacking or whether that's, you know, in a physical world, I think safety and security is something that, that has to be thought about as part of this as well. Martin, it's great to talk to you. Martin Newman, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me.